but I'm seeing all of the mirrored experiences in the the performance training arena because i mean i was also that singer who was making some discoveries off on the side i brought it to the instructor of like hey i was figuring this out and it was like almost a threatening thing where it got squashed if they didn't give it to me it was like that master and student of like I know you shut up and do what I say. Yeah, yeah. And so I was making these other discoveries and like I learned very quickly, don't bring them to the table, hide them over here. And it slows down the process. And then I was with, some, you know, and later on, somebody was like, bring it on. Like if you make yeah. a discovery, put it on the table. So I think yeah. what makes this conversation also super interesting is that we're talking about it on, on a front level of shared decision-making, but what we're really seeing is a shift of paradigm. So when we think about the ontological and epistemological like paradigms, meaning what, how is knowledge created? Who gets to say it's knowledge? Who has the power to, to say it's knowledge or not? How are decisions made? We're talking about big shifts because we're saying now, like it's begging the question, like is the patient or, you know, in my world, the student, like are they blank slates to be written on? Which is very, typical that master student or clinician as expert very typical of where these sciences came from i mean if we talk about like positivist and post-positivist thinking where the natural sciences came out it's like the the natural world is to be observed and controlled and predicted and like even in our research right for for a long time we talked about it as like we couldn't even acknowledge that we were the author. We had to say the author. I can't even acknowledge the fact that I'm a part of this interpretation here as I'm writing. Right. And so we had researcher and participant or even less than participant subject, you know? So right. uh, so this whole, the whole field that we have of bringing sciences into voice care, we're looking at, <laughs> we're, we're talking about a paradigm that was built on the idea of separation right. of like experts and not. And so what we're seeing now is this shift from this positivist or post-positivist kind of paradigm into something that we would call more constructivist or humanist, exactly. where we're exactly. talking about the co-creation of knowledge. We're talking about being partners in deciding values and preferences and, and, and that those values on both sides get to be part of that decision-making process. And, and we're talking about um, the idea of um, like in both, traditional conservatory stuff and and in um, uh, medical clinical voice care, we're talking about collaborative decision making and, and, you know, who is this who, what are our actual roles, like our roles are shifting is what we're seeing, which is kind of big. So we're talking about in shared decision making, we're saying, me as the expert or um, in the space, I'm actually going to make space because I know that you have information you know, we don't have a shared nervous system, <laughs> you no, know, so no. we're making space for student agency, patient agency. And that's a massive thing. That's not a that that's not nothing. So um, yeah. and I think what's interesting is in the research, when we look into co-creation, collaborative decision making, shared decision making, we are seeing um, at, like uh, suggestions of increased satisfaction, better outcomes, the, even the quality of the decisions is better. But I'm also seeing the, the literature also suggests that, that it does require some competency in both the, the provider, you know, the, whoever the, the so-called expert in the space is, but also the patient or the student. There's competencies on both sides. And then the system that's holding it also has to have some, some in, integral structures. 